Hi everyone and welcome again uh, on my YouTube live stream. Uh, how are you doing tonight? Uh, so um, yeah, well, the candidates is over. We could talk of course about uh, current tournaments because the Grenke uh, Chess Classic is um, is uh, going on now in uh, Karlsruhe and now Baden-Baden. So we could actually do something about these games. But uh, I think it's, it's about time that we switch back to uh, a maybe slightly more um, thorough idea of uh, how to learn on chess, uh, what to do about uh, training. And um, I thought it would be a good idea tonight to uh, show you one of my, or perhaps my most memorable endgame. Uh, I'm not going to reveal which game it is yet because it's um, it's uh, coming a bit later. And uh, well, actually, when I when I played that game, that was quite a long time ago. Uh, I was extremely impressed during the game. I had to defend. I mean, it's it's a game I lost in the end game, uh, and I was extremely impressed by my opponent's play. Not only during the game because I was really trying to solve my problems but in the end to no avail and I, I lost that game but also afterwards when I analyzed it uh, it actually proved ex extremely instructive and um, extremely uh, useful for uh, my understanding, general understanding of uh, end games and chess. Um, so uh, well I, uh, I'm gonna check a bit um, about uh, well this is yeah I'm gonna check a bit in the uh, in the chat and I can see that some of you are already here hello Omkar uh, hello Noah uh, nice to see you all again um, yeah here we are back uh, as you can see and um, yeah I hope that everything is okay uh, actually I'm gonna start um, by showing this very basic position which uh, you certainly know, because actually, if you remember, we've um, we've done a little bit about uh, something about endgame in one of my previous live streams. I've talked about endgames and the importance of knowledge in endgames. If you remember, otherwise, if you've not, if you haven't uh, checked that um, live stream, of, if you weren't there or haven't seen that video, you can always check it back in in on my channel. All uh, videos and live streams are stored there. So uh, you can check about uh, the importance of uh, learning theoretical positions in the in the end game, and this is one of the most basic in rook endings. The reason I'm showing this is it's going to be useful for what we're gonna look at later on. And uh, well, this is the Philidor position, a very old position um, which has been well not invented but analyzed and the method on how to draw with white has been determined by the great Philidor um, and well the, the point is that white actually here is going to defend and make a draw even though he's a pawn down that uh, black pawn can uh, run of course but uh, the, the basic idea of, of white's defense is that the rook is active First of all, it's active on the third rank where it prevents the black king from advancing. And uh, well, let's say white is, is to move. Uh, here he's gonna wait with his rook on the third rank. He can go to b3, to g3, doesn't really matter. Uh, one should also point out that uh, the king occupies here an ideal square uh, just in front of the pawn. That's very important. Uh, so. White waits, uh, black can wait as well if he wants, but it doesn't really matter. And um, well, let's, let's move back like this, for instance, we move a bit. At, at some point, if black wants to make uh, progress, he's gonna have to push, push his pawn and he's gonna try to push d3. Well, at that moment, white notices that the, the third rank has been cut off by the pawn, so that king e3 now is a real threat. In that moment, when, as soon as the pawn advances, you go down with the rook to the other side and you start giving checks from behind. Black is not in time by one tempo. In general, in chess, it's always about one tempo and you can always go and complain to your friends, you know, I was short of one tempo, I would have won it or I would have saved the game. But chess is mostly about one little tempo. And here is this, the case again. Um, well, if check, then the king goes up, simply check again, we go down again. And, and as uh, I, I mentioned, if the king tries to go up to e3, threatening mate now with rook g1, now we check from behind and the king has nowhere to 
hide. Um, just coming back, let's say, to this position again, if the rook leaves the third rank before the pawn has advanced, let's say, go down, goes down to, um, to h8, well, here it might not yet be uh, too tragic, uh, but basically you have to be careful that now the king can progress. So uh, in here it doesn't really matter because you can still check, but if at this, in the starting position I go down to a8 here, this is inaccurate because I, I'm going to play here king e3. And now black is going to be able to find a shelter behind or in, in front of his pawn. Uh, if I give a check here, now you can hide on d3 and it already looks bad. Uh, as well, if you check from the side, then d3. Okay, that was just... Uh, one example, just a, a basic uh, reminder of the one of the most uh, principal rules in rook endings. Here the, the rook is very active, waiting uh, for the pawn to advance to give check. Now we're going to move to the game's position. And, well, I can see, um, just checking your comments, because of course we are in a live stream. And the live stream is also about exchanging, sharing, ch exchanging ideas. So um, I'm going to check, of course, the chat. I I'm soon going to ask you a question, a very one, very important one. So, bonsoir, Mark. Uh, chess improvement, hello. Uh, how about rook g3? Um, let me see. I, I'm, I'm checking uh, the chat on, on the other video. Um, uh, to do, 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 rook h8. Uh, you are asking me, I'm just gonna check. What, how about instead of king e3, where was king e3? Was it here? Um, rook g3, you're asking instead of king in this position, perhaps. Well, then I'm gonna, um, I'm going to check from behind. Well, actually, you have no threat, so I'm gonna check from behind. I'm not sure you meant this king e3 here, or maybe here. No, not here. King e3, king e3. I have no king e3 anywhere, so... Um, well, I don't really know where which move. Maybe you could mention the move, the, the number of move, uh, which I was you, you were referring to. Um, basically, the, um, the method to draw here is, is pretty clear for... Uh, for, for white and, and the very, very, you know, it's one of the basic positions you're going to find in any uh, book on endings or rook endings in, in particular. So, um, well, I suggest I, I move to, um, to the game's position where everything is starting because there, you know, there is going to be a lot of action. So the next game Mm, let me just see if everything is right. I can't lo load the next game for some reason. So let me just move here to this and I hope that everything is fine. Mm, not really. Let me see. Now, do you have it? I'm just checking. It's just a question of... Uh... So now it should be good. Okay, I'm happy. I managed to fix the technical problem by myself and I hope everything is okay. Yes! So, here is the game's position. I'm playing white and I'm gonna say a bit later who is my opponent because I, I don't want um, to reveal anything yet about what happened and uh, I'm, gonna ask, um, I'm gonna ask you, my dear um, uh, friends here uh, who are watching and um, participating in, in the in the chat. Um, it's black to move here, black to move. I'm playing white, it is black to move. And um, the question is how to proceed with black. So I'm gonna leave you uh, a little bit of time. Yeah, thank you, Mari. <laughs> yeah, some, some problems always. And, uh, and luckily, Mari is always there to, uh, to solve my technical problems, but here, in the life I managed to do it. Uh, so thank you for the encouragement. So black to move here. What to do? You can see, well, my rook here on, on c4 is doing a, yeah, quite a good job, actually, protecting d4 and also attacking b4. 
So white actually wants to win a pawn. And, um, well, um, my king on f1 is, is a bit passive, of course, compared to your king on d5 with black. here, And your rook is also doing quite a good job on the, on the second rank. Um, what can I say? Um, yeah, you have a pawn majority here. These uh, three pawns, g5, f5, e4. I can't see yet any, any, any comments in the chat, so um, don't hesitate. Uh, it's your turn. Black to move. What do you suggest? It's not an easy one. It's not such an easy one. You have a pawn majority, three against two here, and that's certainly gonna play some part here. So I've actually taken this board without any analysis, without any variation, so that we, we can actually analyze. And um, so Omkar, you were saying f4 looks natural, and you are absolutely right. Idea e3, king e4, f3, and Noah Fekker says e3 must be calculated. And this is true, because um, there are many ideas. Um, Oh, it's clear you can't protect your b-pawn, so you just give it, give up on it, it's not, no use actually. The question is how to progress with, a, with black. So I like f4 and I like e3, I like these two moves and I suggest we, we take a look uh, at these two moves, one after the other. Let's start with f4, because it seems natural you have um, you know, this pawn majority and you want to advance your candidate here, and that's the e-pawn, that's the past candidate. Uh, the past pawn, you know, it's going to be a past pawn whenever you play f4 and e3. So let's try to move it. I take here and I take on b4. What to do now? What to do now? So there is a, a very small lag, a few seconds between um, what I say and what you see. Uh, at home. Uh, that's why when I talk you probably get that a few seconds later. So I'm, I'm leaving you, I'm, I'm giving you some time here. Rook takes b4. And I'm checking the chat, of course, see what you're saying on my other comp. So I can see Omkar e3 takes, oops, and now f3, that's right, and the king is gonna come. That's a good idea. But um, here I believe white can make a draw and probably the best way is just to um, go back to b8, I mean not go back, but go to b8 with um, with, the, with the rook to b8. And now if you play king e4, I'm gonna check down to e8. Here there is no threat mate yet, because I always have this square on f2. And I, um, I certainly have to make sure that your, if, your come, if your king comes to e3 by taking my pawn, then I have absolutely, I have to check you from behind. And then we actually get that, that Philidor kind of position. Actually, I, I could even probably uh, afford wasting a tempo, even though it's, it's not a good move to give. Well, maybe it's not a bad move to give a check, because I can also check here. Now, and you have to go here, and you probably can't support your pawn with the king. So, um, not quite ideal here. Well, just one, one pawn is enough, you know, but uh, it has to be supported well. Mm, so, f takes e3, what you can take a look at is f takes e3. And um, now it's, it's a little bit tricky, perhaps. You know, what 
what are you doing here? White has to make a draw, maybe not an easy thing to do. How to make a draw here after f takes e3 for white. Now the question for white, of course. Let's take a look at normal moves, like again, rook b8. If I play rook b8, here there is going to be king e4. And look at this. Now if we, well we can, you know, if I try to be on the promoting square e1 again, now you go to d3. And that's funny. Okay, maybe king e1 was a bit cooperative, but uh, look at this now. I can't check from behind. Rook d8 is no check. This own pawn of mine, the pawn on d4, is a great shelter for black's king. So it doesn't work. And actually, rook b8, king e4, that's already a win for um, for black here. I can't do anything. Well, if I check, it's of no use. You're going here, and now if I try pushing my own pawn, you're going to check king g2 and e2, and I can't prevent you from queening here. Though I can probably still play d6. It, it could be a bit tricky here. So maybe I haven't played the best move. d5. Maybe, no, check it immediately is not the greatest move. So how to, how to win with white here? I guess the best move is to play um, maybe, okay, uh, probably there are some moves here. Okay, rook a1 is probably not too bad. King g2, and now maybe we have to stop that pawn and play rook a6. I think this should be winning quite comfortably. Maybe even here I should check first on, on f2. It could be better. But okay, this looks pretty pretty good. Rook a1, king g2, rook a6, stopping the d-pawn. Well, just to, to explain you, because maybe you haven't really seen uh, the, the main point of d6 now, if we, if we make a queen, takes, takes, there is d7, and suddenly the d-pawn queens as well. So, um, that's not very good for, uh, for black. So here, rook a6, stopping the d-pawn, and that king now of mine is very far from the pawn. Um, and if we, if we go back here, then probably just king d2, and not easy here with this pawn. Here, white is going to, to lose. But, um, yeah, that's why actually here, coming back to e3, let me just see. Um, so Mark Cram is actually saying something very clever here. We have to give this pawn to be able to check. Yeah, we, we should give... Actually, if we have no pawn with, with white, it's even better. If we have no b3, no d4 in this position, it's a draw from the fillet position, the black king cannot enter. So what to do here? What to do in this position? Rook b8 is not enough. Do you have a suggestion? So sometimes you might, um, again, there might be a small lag and um, you might Write something and wait till I write. Non-theoretical pawns. Um, mm. Well, Yusupov, indeed, um, perhaps the most famous pupil of Dvoretsky, and Dvoretsky who has written uh, the famous um, book um, on endgames, endgame manual great, the Bible basically of, of chess endings and uh, Yusupov, his um, yeah, greatest pupil, um, candidate's finalist at 
I think two on two occasions in at the end of the 80s beginning of the 90s he was one of the top five players in the world and um, a great end game specialist as well and he's become an author of, of chess books as well with great um, great works as well so how to how to make a draw mark cram says rook a4 so tell me mark cram what is the point if i play rook b2 simply rook b2 I could play another move maybe, but rook b2. I, ju I just say, okay, you have played rook a4, nice for you. I only go to a4, uh, to b2. What to do here? So Omkar goes further, says rook a4, rook b2, rook a1, and I will sack all pawns, since pawn is already on e3. Mm -hmm. But the problem here, black is not forced to take on b3. Well, it's not checkers. In checkers, when your opponent gives you a piece or a pawn or whatever it's called, uh, you have to take it. In chess, you don't. So here after rook a1, I'm not going to take on b3. I'm going to play king e4, I think. And how are you going to give up all pawns? It's not that easy. If you wait, or if you push your d pawn, I'm just coming into the f3 and I'm starting to threaten many many things and you can't go down here because of check on oh, checkmate on b1 even so here actually and if you play d6 um, well let me see I think I'm gonna play rook h2 threatening mate you have to go to g1 and I think I'm gonna play rook g2 could perhaps go immediately you have to go to h1 and now I play let's say this rook g7 and I'm ready to play king f2 e2 where I'm threatening mate after king e2 uh, king f2 sorry well if you check here of course it's possible but I go here and I think my pawn is going to be extremely fast so um, when Mark Cram follows up or follows through with his idea after rook a4, rook b2, Mark Cram says b4. What do you think, folks, about this idea? That looks pretty good actually. b4. Because now if I play king e4, what do you play after king e4? what to play after king e4 or well, sometimes I pose to let you think of course because it's not an easy position Well, there is only one move here. How to stop king f3? Yeah, well. It's rook a8. So now if king f3, go to f8 check and the king has to retreat, but now he wants to go to come to d3. So we go back to a8, and if it really comes to d3, then rook there to a3. King d2, well, it's still not over. And here I play rook a1. And even though it looks very dangerous, let's say if e2 there, it's already okay for white. And there is basically no stop stopping rookie one or actually I could play d5 next so that's that's fine 
King d2, and what can you do? Well, I, I play rook a1, yeah, and uh, what to do here? If you take on b4, I just check here. And I'm going to escape. My king is going to escape. Whenever you leave d2 unprotected, I'm going to move king e2. Uh, whenever you leave e2 unprotected, I'm going to move up. Yeah, rook a8, you're right. Omkar and Mark Kram. If you go to d3, I just go up here. And yeah, that's it's gonna be fine already. If you go to e4, same story, go down to a8. So here, my actually my only small problem is that the king on f1 is not ideally placed, but it's still enough to make a draw. It would be better on e1, but I don't really have the time to make it work. So uh, well, rook a4, very good move. Rook a4. That's the actually the only saving move here. And even if he give you know. We could think black is going to gain a tempo here. Rook f2, king e1. But he's improving the position of our king. King to e1. He goes king e4. And now again, I'm not going to make you wait or think again. It's, it's the same move as before. b3, b4 move saves white from king d3. Because we always have this check here. And if he plays king f3, then I have rook a8 in that position. And um, well, nothing, nothing to do for, uh, for for black here. If he checks here, we can go to d1 or to f1. Doesn't really matter. Perhaps to d1 is slightly more accurate, but it actually doesn't really change anything. King d1 is a draw. King f1 is a draw as well here. So, well, white in this line is in time, just in time, to push his b pawn, free the third rank, in order to give checks on that same rank. And that's going to prevent the black king from entering um, with uh, devastating uh, consequences. So f4 and e3, this looks actually very logical, but actually it's not enough. Well, there is one more resource here, which I'm just going to mention. I'm not going to ask you a question here, but there is f3, which is a very tricky move. f3 here. Um, well, that move... Um, actually is dangerous because it threatens mate on e1 but um, well white can save here he he plays rook king e1 rook e2 is a good move king has to go back to f1 and now we can play um, something like rook b2 or rook um, c2 maybe rook b2 say we have to go back to e1 again and um, well, here it's actually not easy for, or not even possible, almost for Black to to make progress. Maybe he can play a waiting move like like Rook C two. Then um, then we can probably just play Rook B eight here. And after King takes D four, we can start checking from behind. And even if we have to give up this b3 pawn, we're probably just going to make a draw quite uh, comfortably here. Well, comfortably maybe not, but we are going to make a draw. So um, that's um, it's actually okay here. So coming back to the starting position, instead of f4, we are going to take a look at uh, Noah's uh, suggestions, suggestion, which is e3. Very tempting as well. Well, I, I guess I don't really have a choice, so I take here, and the idea is to play king e4. What to do now? What to do? It's also a question of how to defend these positions. It's not, not an easy easy thing to do. What do you think? The king is coming to f3 or perhaps even taking on, on e3. Depends a bit. Huh? What to do, what to do? I hope the stream is okay, I hope the um, transmission is fine. It 
to me it looks all right so um, I'm only inviting you to uh, participate in the in the chat if you have any idea g4 for white could be an idea actually interesting maybe g4 for white is that what you mean yeah well white that's an interesting move. maybe black can start with um, king f3 here threatening mate on a1 what about this <laughs> the stream is okay but the position is tough well I still prefer it this way then uh, position easy and stream not working king f3 what to do we, we need to move that king or perhaps to play rook c1 but um, I doubt here um, if we can uh, make it mm, but maybe it's enough actually maybe I, I could have a better move here the problem is if I take you now get these typical G pawns maybe it's, maybe it's okay for for white but how to make a draw because um well there is this this rule if if I take away everything and um, let's say black is left with just these three items here the king the rook and the g pawn the rest is gone and white is left with rook and king and we we take everything all these pawns here e3 ad4 and so on then this this is a theoretical draw but if we have another g pawn an additional if we have double g pawns so this position without e3 d4 b4 e and b3 just remove all, all everything then this is a win then it's not enough the, the first rank defense is not enough uh, against double pawns the, the point is actually black can force the exchange of, of rooks at some point the king moves to, to h3 and then we, we play um, g3 and uh, we yeah we maneuver the rook so that we can uh, actually force uh, a transposition into a pawn ending okay it's a bit technical but basically it's, it wouldn't be enough so here well uh, probably the same works but um, I'm not very happy about f takes g4 to be honest so um, but I could actually take a look at f oops what is this I could uh, actually take a this into consideration takes takes and I'm going to play a free king e3 those are my next moves um, if you go down here then I'm gonna play king f3 and uh, I'm gonna take a look at your suggestion Noah to play d5 I guess after king e4 mm, so here we need to um, well what 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 can we do a good good idea would be in general to play king g1 but here there is king g3 and no check on g8 again another shelter seems to be the the main topic of this uh, end game here the pawn on g4 preventing checks from behind so that's no solution but what to do we can't check the king we can go down to the first rank that's true but this is coming again king g3 g5 and let's say perhaps now um, well maybe a three g6 and rook h2 and um, the mate mating threat on on h1 is pretty terrible but i think after a move like rook e1 i still have to be a bit careful as black because uh, rook h1 check is probably not enough oh yes maybe it is rook h1 check king d2 and now I take on c1 if you push g7 I have rook c8 that's losing and if you take then I queen with check f2 g7 and f1 check so um, yeah that seems to be enough too so g4 seems to be perhaps not quite enough um, I like the idea d5 by um, by Noah let's check what it's worth if I go into um, 
F3. No checks. No check for the rook. So we have to try rook c1. And maybe it's enough, actually. Maybe it's going to be enough for, um, for white. The point is that um, after rook h2, I always have king g1. So that's no use. It's of no use. And if I take one of these pawns, g3, then I probably run. Uh, maybe, maybe an idea is to play rook d2 here. That could be clever. Rook d2, preventing the pawn from moving further. And um, what does white do here? You can try king g1, but I still I'm gonna take and I'm, I'm probably gonna come back here. Maybe I'll play g4 first. Doesn't seem too obvious yet. Huh? Hmm. Well, actually. The idea is to go back to, to the first rank anyway, but bef before that, I think it's good to take here on, on b4, king f3, and play rook a4. Rook c1 is maybe not forced. It's true, but actually, I, well, I took a look at this um, in my analysis. Um, and actually, the, the only way to, to, to draw for white is to take this pawn on b4 and go rook a4 now. And um, it's again a question of just one tempo. Um, well, if, if rook b2, we go down to a1. Well, if rook h1, oh, sorry, if rook h2, then we have to play king g1. And we're we gonna make it uh, by one tempo too. Rook b2, rook a1, and that's actually. Uh, just enough for uh, for white in this position. So Omkar says rook retreats to the first rank should never work with two three pawns. Well, it depends. With white also have some pawns. That d pawn is pretty strong. The b pawn is, uh, is able to lure somehow. Uh, so maybe. You know, maybe something like g4. I don't know, I'm gonna push pawns, maybe d5. Maybe maybe I should play b4, try to free the third rank again. Somehow it looks it looks like it's going to be enough for uh, for white to um, to make a draw. Uh, let's say, I don't know, if you take on b4, push d pawn, and at some point I'm gonna force your rook back, at least uh, if, I, um, if I put my rook behind my d pawn, it's going to be quite, quite good, I think. So that should be enough for a draw, I think. But it's, uh, it's very close, it's very close. So. Um, well, let's, let's actually go back um, to the starting position, f4. Well, not f4, before f4 or bishop e, before e3. Well, you've actually, um, you actually guessed most of typical ideas for, uh, for black here, which uh, should work, but don't quite work in, in, in the way we are trying to, to make them here. Uh, there is another resource, I, I mean it's all linked of course, but there is another move for, for black here which is actually the only winning move and the one played my, by my opponent. Uh, so Omkar is asking how is this a draw? So you were probably referring to the position after I played, where was it? I, um, yeah I took that played king f3, I played this, you you mean this position, right? g4, b4, so you were asking, I take g3 and push g pawn, yeah? So probably, which moment? Rook takes b4 or here takes on g3? How was that? Uh, 
I would like to know which moment you 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 mean that after rook takes b4, or um, or here in this moment move 46 perhaps. Just talk, just tell me in the chat which moment, and we're gonna take a look at it. We can actually take a look at both, but I think you probably mean here immediately. Rook takes g3. Yeah, rook takes a uh, king takes g3. Well, here, what about d5 maybe? King takes g3. Mm, yeah, maybe. Um, it's, I think d5 should actually be enough, maybe. I also have another idea which could be rook a3, but then, then you're gonna make it probably with king f3 and I take... So, um... Let me see. It's not easy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I haven't looked at everything and I have to try and, and work out things my, my well, my, myself as well. I'm tempted to play d5, but then you're right that king f3 and g3. Perhaps I should try. I mean, you want to go back to f3 with the king, right? That's your idea. Let me highlight it. And I need to be able to check you. So perhaps rook a5. <clears throat> before rook takes before yeah that's the moment you meant yeah maybe rook a5 here so now i i'm clearly preventing this move because i i can take and it's easy draw so you probably have to try f4 but then how to make this work here That's a draw because I'm able to check you on, on on the third rank, and if you try King H2, this also looks like I'm I'm just in time to take on F5, yeah. And of course I I'm even gonna win the game. G3 Rook H5 mate. So uh, okay, I tricked you. Um, yeah. So how to win after Rook A5? I think that's that's the rook a5 is the good move probably, and it's always important that I'm able to check from behind. I, I, you know, sometimes it's I mean the ideal would be on the you know, from the eighth rank you have to take as much distance as possible, but here I don't have a choice. I have to try to play rook a5, maybe rook d1 as well, but I'm a bit skeptical because your g pawn is going to be fast. I think rook a5 makes it. So let's let's move back to the game because actually there is still a lot of action here. F4 has not been played. E3 has not been played. And actually the the good move here is uh, is G4. G4. That's the good move here. And we're going to Discover now. I am actually. I'm gonna leave this board and take the next one. Okay, and that's the game position. And actually, that's my game against Grandmaster Eduardos Rosenthalis uh, from Lithuania. Um, that game was played in 1996, so you can see it's pretty old. At the Olympiad in uh, Yerevan. That was actually my first Olympiad. I was just 20 years old. And um, since Viktor Kochnoi uh, refused to play this Olympiad, he didn't like the place. Uh, Yerevan probably reminding him of Petrosian, his big enemy on the chessboard, and probably not just on the chessboard. Um, well, he didn't want to go to that uh, Armenian capital. So um, we went there with uh, a team of six international masters, and uh, I was the younger, the youngest, and also we were all rated three or four around. 24, 24, 50. So the captain decided to give me the first board, and that was actually a pretty tough experience um, because I faced uh, great, you know, players like and very experienced one like Rosenthalis. I played against Eggestein, I played against um, Krasenkov, 
and uh, some other uh, very strong grandmasters. So uh, yeah, my overall score was not very good. I think I made minus two or three. Played 11 games, so it was pretty tough. And uh, But I learned a lot from that uh, tournament because afterwards I took my time to analyze um, my games. Uh, those I lost, of course, were the most uh, instructive. And, and that end game was particularly uh, great to to analyze at the time of course without computers so it took me it took me of course many many hours and days of work to uh, go through all the complications and um, but okay during the game was also uh, was not an easy easy thing yeah yeah g4 is very counterintuitive because uh, you're basically when you play g4 you more or less um, devaluate your um, your pawn majority, you you find it much harder to create a passed pawn here. Actually, you can see that's move 41. Uh, I can't remember if we have if we were in time trouble in that game, but in any case, after move 40, we both got an hour, a whole hour more on the clock for the next 20 moves. And uh, he actually took his time to think here, and um, and he came up with that move g4, which shocked me. But as soon as he played it, I understood what his idea was. He wants to break through here with g4, or with f4, sorry. And then when I take, he wants to break through with e3. And then he has created a passed pawn on the g file here. And he enters with the king to f3. When I, I said you, you saw and understood the main ideas, breaking through, entering with the king, you, you had all these ideas, but you needed time, perhaps, uh, a bit maybe a quiet moment to to try and figure out how to make this work and and Rosenthal is so that and he went g4 and there is nothing really we can do here um, what if I play um, uh, if I play rook uh, c5 check it's not going to be enough either uh, he takes I take and um, well he's gonna go after my b pawn I mean that one is is worth is worth something as well. Mm. Uh, actually, I'm just wondering. Um, yeah, I haven't been able to. Sorry, then um, something is happening which is not. Just let me see. Yeah. That's what I want. Just yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I again something didn't work with the uh, refreshment of the page. So I guess now you must have yeah that game against Rosenthalis. So I was talking, and you can now see Rosenthalis here and his picture at the time. He's still around 2600 uh, nowadays, even though he's uh... so um, yeah. I was I was actually moving pieces. And you can really see what had happened. So now everything is okay. I can do that. So um, yeah, rook c5 now takes and rook b2. And he goes after my b pawn. He's going to take it. And he's going to move his pawn forward. Uh, I think I'm not going to be able to save that game here. So uh, I took on b4. He went f4. Was his idea, of course. And, um, well, I understood what's, what's coming. I took a lot of time to think here. Um, and I understood what was coming. He's wa he wants to play e3, he wants to create a pass pawn, and it's not easy. Again, if I, if I take here, just e3 is coming, I have to take it. He comes through with the king, and he doesn't care about my pawns. He's not going to take them. He's going to use them. On the contrary, he's not going to take them. He's going to use them as a shelter for his king. And the g-pawn is going to decide the game. So here uh, I'm going to lose it. f4. Uh, I played rook a4. Rook b2. Well, actually, I, I said here e3. Actually, g3 is the best move, you know, as, as he played in, in the game. And then e3, because g, the g-pawn would be perhaps less dangerous. So in the game, I played rook a4, trying to free my position rook b2 and at some point I'm hoping to play b4 just in time to get rook a3 and checks here. 
So that would be my idea. In the game I took on f4 and we're going to see how, how he sacrificed actually almost all of his pawns in order to queen the last one. Mm, if I check on a5, he takes on d4. Here I'm getting some space for my, for my rook perhaps. But it's of no use if, he, if I check again, king d3, g takes f4, again g3. And I'm not in time. If I play b4, g takes f2. Check here, king d4, and he's simply going to move forward with his pawn. Then maneuver, well, of course, he's going to threaten rook b1 then, and it's all over. And if I take on g3, he goes e3, rook a1, rook a and now just king a4, king e4, and king f3, like this. I mean, you're free to, to still write something I, I'm uh, in the chat, of course, yeah? I, trying to my best to explain things but perhaps if things are not clear just don't hesitate to uh, put any questions there so uh, rook a4 check is of no use and if i take here again g3 takes and first king e3 first king e3 because if he plays e3 then i i hope i'm able to uh, to draw here with this move well not sure yet but i hope perhaps cutting his king, even though after king d3 it's still uh, not so easy. In any case, king e3 is quite easy for, for him. b4, king f3 just in time to get e3 and, oops, sorry, wrong move for the, the rook, to get e3 just in time and then I'm, I'm just completely lost with white. So I took on f4 Ah, the question whether we can download the analysis. Um, I'm not sure, um, but um, it's a good question, actually. Perhaps I have no idea if technically I can put a link in, um, you know, down the, the, in the comments afterwards. Perhaps I can put a link to download. Um, I, I have to check with my technical specialist at home uh, if we can do that, and she's going to... Uh, try and fix it and otherwise yeah you might have to copy that from uh, from uh, from here from the screen which is certainly not very practical so I am certainly going to try to to um, to make this work and um, check it uh, tomorrow maybe you I'm, I'm gonna be able to to put it so check check in the chat in the commentary you you might find it if I manage it so I took on g4 on f4 sorry gf and he played g3 yeah I was actually a bit Missing. I said e3, but then if he plays like this, I'm probably just in time to uh, to play rook a1. Now I think it doesn't really matter with, whether I have these four pawns or not. It's it's uh, a quite an easy draw here. He can't really uh, force me to uh, to go away. Uh, actually, the defense on the th on the first rank works as an alternative to the field position only against the, the knight pawn, of course against the rook pawn as well, but the rook pawn is drawn in many ways. But against the knight pawn, this is enough. Yeah. This is why I was mentioning if black has double pawns, g pawns, then it's winning for him if I play the first trying defense, but okay, that's, that's technical. So here, g3, that's what he played, and, and he's actually going to win. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, I see that I can, so I'm going to do that, sure. f takes g3. And he played e3. Yeah, what to do now? My f pawn, my d pawn, my b pawn, maybe maybe my g pawn even are all shelters for his king, allowing him to enter here to f3 to support his e pawn, who is which is already on e3, very dangerously placed. So what I can do is try to wait, king e1. King e4, well, see now, rook a3, if he goes to d3, I have b4, but he comes, of course, to, to f3. If I play king d2, e2, and, well, the computer first says that maybe this is a fortress, but not. It's not the case. Check here, and actually, black is going to, to win quite comfortably here. Um, it would be a fortress with a pawn on b2. Well, actually, kind of rook on c3 and making a draw but with a pawn on b3 it's actually lost here and he just comes with the king and 
well, it's going to be to be lost. I mean, I can play b4, but he takes on d4, and um, black is gonna win in the long long run. The pawns are not not very much of use here. So, um, so I played f5. <coughs> he played king e4, and now, well, I tried pushing my f pawn, but it's it's too late actually. The game is over, uh, even though the the following line is pretty tricky. Now it's actually it's the same if I play b4. And then king f3, rook a1, or if I immediately play rook a1, so I'm just going to show this line, king f3, b4. Um, well, he has to be careful, he has to show a good technique here, because if he plays e2, king e3, now suddenly I, I, I'm making it, I'm making a draw here. Well, I have even many pawns, so I might even think about winning the game here, who knows. But e2 he's not going to do, he's going to do it only at the right moment, so he goes rook h2. King g1, I have to do that. Rook g2 check. That's actually a typical uh, typical ploy to try and win a tempo. King h1, I have to do it. If I go to f1, e2, and now the rook is suddenly on the right side here. Sorry, on the right side to give a check on g1. <coughs> so I have to play king h1. And here there are several ways to win, but the uh, cleanest is probably to take on g3. King h2, and well, he can win with e2, but perhaps easy, easiest is perhaps rook g5, rook f1, king e2. If I go back to b1, then just king f2, and now again, a shelter with e2 is coming, and I can actually resign here. So I played f6, he went to f3, I played rook a1. And here he played rook g2, and I actually resigned in this position. Um, well, there's not so much I can do here. He only has to be uh, a bit careful. I mean, rook g2 is the most accurate. If I play rook e2, rook e1, sorry, he goes e2. Unfortunately, there is this trick here. If I play f7, it looks good, but he has this check on f2. And after I move the king, just he moves the king's the king as well, and he stops my pawn. If I play f7, well he has e2 again. And after king e1 now, very important not to give a check because suddenly white would even be be winning here. King d2 takes f8 with check. Unfortunately, he has king e3, and again this damn b pawn preventing my check from the side. Rook a3 doesn't work, of course. I am blocked by the b-pawn. So here after king e3, I'm, I'm, I can just resign. It's mate, next move. So rook g2 was definitely the most accurate. He, rook f2 would not have been as good because I can go to g1. Well, it's still a win for black after e2, again, by just a very short margin. But here, you know, King g2, and I can start hoping again. Well, rook c7 actually wins, but it's it's getting complicated. I mean, by no you know, no real reason to make on, make it complicated. And in case he even plays rook g2, then I go to h1, and suddenly my f pawn is distracting uh, Black's forces, and here I can I can save my skin. But uh, yeah, rook g2 as he played was the most accurate and I, I actually resigned because there is nothing I, I can do here. Um, well, I don't know what you think about this endgame. I, I, yeah, well, I can see Omkar Tukredeo thinks it was a really amazing rook ending and actually, yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, um, some years ago, not, not too, too many years ago, uh, Rosenthalis published a book about his best games and he's actually an endgame specialist. He, He's, he's won many nice uh, rook end games as well, and one of, of his uh, star games in, in the book is, is this end game. Well, actually, the whole game was qu quite good uh, as well, but uh, the end game is clearly the star part of, of, that, of that game. So, um, well, um, yeah, it was actually um, a very nice idea, giving up all your pawns, almost all your pawns, three pawns, in order to make the last pawn uh, queen uh, and 
you know, important, of course, all these shelters, the white pawns disturbing the defense from all sides. Um, that's really something which marked uh, my memory. Um, and it's always remained um, something quite, quite uh, instructive. I, I never really got the chance to, to be on the other side of, of, of the board and, and use these ideas to try and, and win. But sometimes you, you get one pawn as a shelter, but so many pawns is something really, really something. So, um, yeah, so, uh, well, it's about it, I guess, for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, Rook and Game. And those of you who were not here during the live stream, but maybe you can enjoy this video afterwards, um, of course, by watching it on my, ch in my channel. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as well. And um, you're very welcome to leave uh, comments um, down there, down below, as uh, people did here in the chat. Um, uh, so, um, yeah. Just uh, feel free to uh, to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it and to like the video or the, the live uh, we've done tonight. Uh, thank you for... Um, oh, and Tirak, Terak, uh, hello Terak, and thank you for your nice video, by the way, and it's good that you join us tonight for, for the live. Uh, if you can check Terak, um, channel as well he's made a, a very funny video as well about um, about his um, way of seeing me because Terra is actually Christian uh, um, he's a chess player from Switzerland and he's uh, yeah a bit older than me so he's seen me grow and he made a, a nice little video about that uh, so um, yeah, thank you, Amkar. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone, uh, for um, for participating in the analysis and uh, making uh, this uh, live stream very lively. So I'm I'm sure you see you uh, next week. Uh, thank you again for watching and see you. Um, well, bye bye. Thank you.